teachers inspire a love for knowledge and truth as you are the light which leads our youth for our futures brighten with each lesson you teach each smile you lend in and each goal you help reach a very good afternoon to one and all present here i am preeti and on behalf of the electrical engineering students association i welcome all of you to the department teachers day celebrations 2021 the first few words were written by the famous composer william kevin huff in which he tried to express the greatness of teachers as we all are filled with gratitude towards our beacon lights without further ado i invite the department general secretary ayush dahale to welcome the august gathering hello everyone uh, i am ayush dahale i am department general secretary of electrical engineering department and i would like to welcome every one of you to this auspicious auspicious occasion where we are celebrating the excellence in teaching awards so as a student everyone will agree with me that when i say that teachers play a very important role in one's personal as well as academic growth and excellence in teaching awards are just a small gesture to celebrate that i would like to thank all the organizers of this event especially ee office uh, uh, so that they organized this event to celebrate uh, the excellence in teaching without further to do i would like to hand over the stage to professor kishore chatterji head of our electrical engineering department to welcome to welcome everyone Uh, thank you ayush uh, respected chief guest professor koil pillai my dear students staff uh, staff members and uh, my colleagues we are really thankful to professor koil pillai for accepting our invitation to grace this occasion of our department as a chief guest i am also thankful to the electrical engineering students association for taking the initiative to organize this event let me also formally and physically congratulate my five colleagues who have won this award it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to this momentous event of our department wherein we felicitate our colleagues who received the excellence in teaching award this excellence in teaching award is a very special and unique kind of an accolade because it is decided solely by your, by our own students and that to anonymous no administration administrators no peers are involved to select these awardees awardees are chosen based on the feedback received after the conclusion of a course offered by our colleagues across the institute i would like to take this opportunity to convey to my dear students that we the faculty members take the course feedback provided by you very very seriously once we received the email from the dean academic affairs mentioning that now you can see your teaching feedback i must say actually it happens to me i really get tense to open the link to see how you have graded me i am sure the feeling remains the same for my other colleagues as well and more importantly we look forward to what you have actually written as comments look uh, these comments are very important for us they prepare us properly for the next offering of the subsequent course i would therefore earnestly like to request all students to provide your opinion objectively and diligently and in large numbers of late what we are seeing is that the number of course feedbacks have are plummeting over the years please give your feedback in large numbers professor koil pillai currently our department is having around 1100 students out of which 700 are post graduate students which means over the past 3 to 2 decades our character has changed from a teaching and research institute where uh, t was a is, is, uh, is, uh, uh, the font of t is around 20 to a research and teaching institute with a very big r and t has remained the same i'm sure this is true for other iits as well although research has become an integral component of our focus 
we have not diluted the intensity of our teaching. We firmly believe that if we don't meaningfully research, we will not become and also will not be able to produce good teachers. And if we don't teach well, we will not be able to generate good researchers with whom we can engage ourselves to bolster our own aspiration to do well in research. So the motto of our department has remained to be research, teaching, and research. Sir, I take pride to say without any hesitation that our department is a very progressive and a democratic one without having any sort of hierarchy existing between the seniors and juniors. Even a student can walk into the office of the head without any prior appointments if she or he desires. I have been observing and obviously enjoying these ethos since I joined this department. COVID has taught us many things of life in a very, very hard way. We have lost many of our near and dear ones. The students and teachers have learned or still are learning how to learn, teach, and interact in online mode. The greatest challenge is how to conduct laboratory sessions, especially those labs which are having a hardware component. Our Wadhwani Electronics Lab, this is the group of laboratories uh, where experiments pertaining to microprocessors, analog and digital electronics, mainly for undergraduate curriculum are being conducted. They came up with a unique solution. This is again an example of great camaraderie that our department possesses. Young and senior faculty members came together, prepared boards which can be powered and controlled from the USB port of laptops or PCs, taking help from our own laboratory staff members. They shipped these boards to the residences of the students. The students performed experiments sitting at home during the slots allotted for those specific labs, taking instructions from the concerned, concerned faculty members Hats off to these colleagues and the dedication shown by our laboratory staff members. Once the semester got over, the students returned back those cards by post to the department with almost zero loss. We are moved by the responsible behavior of our students as well. For control and machines lab, we have no other choice but to run the lab in the video mode. Students are not, not really happy, but we are still working on it. Coming to, the uh, coming to the issue of teaching in general, I would like to hear your view on, on an aspect which is bothering me, maybe others as well. Due to the significant increase in the class strength, these days we are taking more and more help of teaching aids, be it in the form of pre-designed slides, be it animation, be it some live videos, be it the concept of flipped classrooms, so on and so forth. Too much reliance on technology. Is it snatching away the subjective element that a teacher used to possess in the backdrop of a blackboard? And the follow-up question is that, is it reducing the ability of imagination of the students? I would conclude over here, but, but before I do so, I would like to invite you to visit our department in person whenever SOP of COVID permits it to happen so that we can exchange our thoughts in a more meaningful way. One more point to share with you, sir. When I send the mail to the students and to my colleagues, mentioning that you have agreed to be the chief guest of today's event, within half an hour, I got a WhatsApp message from Professor Kumar Appaya, which says, uh, do you think I can introduce Professor Koipilai? He was my GDP guy. This speaks a volume about you, sir. With this, I would like to hand over to Ayush. Thank you very much, sir. I uh, indeed feel truly blessed to be a part of such a great department as described by you. Uh, moving on, uh, we are incredibly privileged to have with us the chief guest for the day, Professor David Koipilai, Qualcomm Institute Chair Professor and also Head of Department Electrical Engineering, IIT Madras. I request uh, Professor Kumar Appaya to introduce and also extend a formal welcome to the esteemed chief guest. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Preeti. Um, so yeah, I'm coming before you as a student here to welcome his uh, teacher. So Professor David Koel Pillai is the, as you said, Qualcomm Chair Professor and Head of the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Madras. Uh, he earned his B.Tech 
in electrical engineering from IIT Madras in 1985, and he got his PhD from Caltech in 1991. Subsequently, he worked in uh, GE as well as Ericsson and made some seminal contributions in the upcoming wireless and cellular, uh, uh, upcoming field of wireless and cellular communication. And since 2002, he's been a professor at IIT Madras, where he has worked on uh, and I mean researched and taught courses on wireless communication, uh, signal processing, and uh, adaptive filtering. And more recently, he's also working on optical systems as well. He was also the uh, co-chair of the IIT Hyderabad, uh, the committee which was responsible for establishing IIT Hyderabad and dean planning at IIT Madras. So on a personal front, uh, I have been fortunate to actually attend his classes. And uh, of course, I can just say he's a great teacher, but that would not mean much. Uh, but his classes and the way he taught are firmly etched in my memory because he taught us the very popular wireless communication course and it had all aspects of theory, practice, as well as uh, industry, you know, because he drew from his vast industry experience and made it quite relevant. In fact, I re distinctly remember that uh, one of the assignments was for us to go all around IIT Madras campus and measure the wireless reception of various providers and, you know, create a map of cellular coverage in the campus. So it was a really fun exercise. Uh, lectures were meticulously planned and always entertaining and interesting. And uh, the more important thing is he was always polite to a fault with students, extremely nice to students and always, uh, you, know, uh, you know, pleasurable to approach. And uh, he always entertained all questions and always, you know, there have been occasions when he actually would uh, take questions and sometimes come to the next class and then give us the answer. And, you know, it would be really, really fun to have those discussions with him. And uh, like Professor Kishore was mentioning, I was also fortunate to have been guided by him. And I think it would be uh, correct to say that he's among the key motivators for me having taken up this job. So, sir, like Professor Kishore, um, I wish to welcome you. But I really uh, have this firm request that you should visit us when times are better. And I, we look forward to hosting you here in person as well. Thanks for coming, sir. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Kumar. And uh, really, it will be my honor to come and visit IIT Bombay. I have I've been there many times, but uh, you know, our post COVID definitely will take up on the uh, invitation from Professor Chatterjee and from yourself. So let me let me begin by sharing my slides, and then Are you able to see my slides? Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, with your permission, uh, Professor Chatterjee, I, I will begin. Uh, sure, sure. Professor Chatterjee, Professor Kumar, winners of the Excellence in Teaching Award, faculty, colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, an honor for me to participate in today's event. Uh, I'll begin by uh, greeting, sending you greetings from IIT Madras. It will be fitting that I begin by expressing hearty congratulations to all the winners of the Excellence in Teaching Award, Professor Chandurkar, Professor Fernandez, Professor Nair, Professor Pal, Professor Singh. And many of them are well known to me. So uh, again, it's a joy to be a part of this program and to share with you uh, a few thoughts. I commend the St Students Association, Electrical Engineering Students Association for this initiative you have taken to uh, felicitate these outstanding teachers. So uh, I uh, titled today's presentation as uh, Reflections of a Teacher. I'd like to share with you some of my perspectives as a teacher, uh, as we in the IIT system collectively face the challenges of recovery of our academic processes post the pandemic. These are multidimensional challenges. However, the solutions that we must come up with are must be contextual, and I'm sure we will be creative uh, in finding the right solutions for our institutions and for our department. So what's on the top of our minds, topmost as teachers? What has been the impact of COVID? How will we recover in terms of our teaching systems, in terms of our research programs? And I'm sure that the commitment that all of us who are in this meeting, our commitment to the IIT education system, that we will find solutions to every challenge, but I believe it will be hard work. Let me begin with an article that appeared in September, 2017. This was in the uh, our magazine, The Atlantic. Uh, it was an article by Jean Twenge. 
the title of the article said everything. It said, have smartphones destroyed a generation? And I believe there were uh, uh, statistics like the one that we have on the right, which says even by the year 2015, uh, more than 40% of the young people were having sleep deprivation. And then it went on to uh, highlight several issues that uh, led to asking this particular question. I believe when, uh, when, when this article did come out, uh, there was a lot of discussions at IIT Madras. And uh, I guess the consensus view was that uh, even back in 2017, that smartphones were causing tremendous amount of damage. And then comes COVID and uh, our dependence on the smartphone becomes even more. And I assume that uh, sleep deprivation and other challenges have gotten worse. I wonder where maybe another article is going to come which says, now it's no longer a question, but a statement which says, smartphones and COVID together have destroyed a generation. But I believe that we as uh, academics, as part of the IIT system must bring something different. We must bring to the table something different. So let me, let me illustrate this uh, with an example. We must uh, be united in our response. We must be uh, very, uh, uh, very focused in our response as well. Now, uh, if you look at along the coast of uh, United States, uh, in the state of North Carolina, there is a lighthouse called Cape Hatteras. It was built in the year 1870. It was all, it's almost 200 feet tall, one of the tallest brick lighthouses uh, in North America. It is uh, very strategically located because it is where the uh, Gulf Stream and the Labrador, uh, the, the current meet. And it's called the graveyard of the Atlantic because of dangerous currents and shallow waters. Cape Hatteras played a very important role for over 100 years, warning ships of dangers in that area. In uh, 1870, you now there was a threat to the lighthouse because when it was built in 1870, it was 1,500 feet away from the ocean. But because of soil erosion and the rise in the, in the ocean waters, now the, the lighthouse was only barely 120 feet from the ocean edge. And uh, every high tide, the waters would cover the base of the uh, lighthouse, potentially weakening the structure, possibly leading to a collapse. There was a lot of discussion. Uh, this is a lighthouse that's no longer needed because now this is the era of GPS and satellite navigation. So should the lighthouse just be abandoned or should be just you know, uh, torn down? Uh, how, what do we do with Cape uh, Hatteras? But uh, I believe the, the voice of those who, believe, who said that uh, this is something that is a part of our heritage. This is something that we want to preserve. But how? How, how, do, you, how do you fight the ocean? And they came up with a very interesting and fascinating solution. A 50 lakh kilogram lighthouse plus foundation was placed on rails by putting the rails underneath and then eventually moved inch by inch 1,500 feet into the, into, the, into the land. And today that's where it stands. Uh, and I, I believe the forecast is for another 100 years, it will stand as a symbol of what the lighthouse stands for. So in the same vein, I, I believe post COVID, we must preserve what is important to us. Like the lighthouse, there are things that we hold very dear to our hearts and we must be creative we must be persistent and that I believe uh, we should work together to find a solution to solution for that. One of the core values that uh, I always uh, repeat to my students is, is that of excellence. Aristotle said it better than anybody else. He said, excellence is not an act, but a habit. It's the ability to do the ordinary things extraordinarily well. A cor corollary to the uh, uh, the uh, aspect of uh, excellence is the circle of excellence, which states that the proficiency with which a student begins, a student begins, is important. But what is what matters even more is the student's willingness to go around that circle of excellence, the circle which talks about learning, adapting, and practicing until mastery is achieved. Yes, online uh, learning is a little bit difficult. Online learning is challenging. But maybe uh, to, to address, uh, to answer that question, what do we do when, when learning becomes uh, a little bit challenging, when it becomes, the environment becomes uh, a little difficult? Uh, I believe it will be very helpful for us to look at an electrical engineer from the past. So I would like to uh, look at Michael Faraday. 
Uh, Michael Faraday, whom the physicist Ernest Rutherford said was one of the greatest scientific discoverers of all time. Some of his contributions, a partial list is on the slide. People argue if uh, Faraday was a physicist, more a physicist or a chemist rather than an electrical engineering. Uh, I believe the very first line which says uh, he, what he contributed to the laws of electromagnetic in, uh, induction, that I believe settles the discussion. We have every right to claim him as an electrical engineer. Faraday's CV was uh, remarkably impressive. He was a fellow of the Royal Society. His contributions to electromagnetism and electrochemistry were foundational. He became a lifetime uh, Fullerian professor of chemistry. Uh, he was a, uh, had a lifetime position with the Royal Institution as well. And of course, the list goes on of the things that he done. With such an impressive list of accomplishments, uh, it is natural to assume that Faraday must have gone to the best school, to the best university and be, have been trained by the best teachers. However, as you know, the reality was very different. Faraday didn't even complete high school. He was uh, the third of four children from a very poor family. Uh, he had discontinued studies because his family could not afford. At the age of 14, he became an apprentice to a local bookbinder. But that's where he found his uh, passion or interest in electricity and chemistry because these were the books that he was binding. And then at age 23, uh, he was asked to deliver a book to the Royal Society. At that time, uh, as he went into the building, he heard the famous English chemist, Sir Humphrey Davy, delivering a lecture. He knew the topic was chemistry, so he stood outside the lecture hall and listened to the entire lecture, went home and wrote down his notes. And so Humphrey ended the lecture by saying that he would meet the students the next day for the next lecture. So uh, um, Faraday promptly showed up at the at Royal Society, again listened to the lecture standing outside. He did this for, his, for the entire series of lectures. Every day he would go home and write his notes. And on the, right, on the bottom right corner, uh, you see this was a compilation of his notes at the end of the lecture series. It was 300 pages. I remember that he had not had a formal high school education. So Humphrey Davy was suitably impressed and his response was immediate and favorable. Faraday became his assistant. So uh, I believe uh, we must overcome challenges. Uh, standing outside a lecture hall and reconstructing what the uh, teacher is, is, is conveying, uh, I believe uh, truly sets the benchmark for each one of us. I also believe that uh, remembering our past, uh, especially uh, for uh, those uh, in the older generation, for us to pass on uh, some of the things that we have learned and experienced so that the next generation will, will carry forward with the same zeal and, and enthusiasm. So I'd like to share uh, uh, an important event that happened in, uh, in the past, and uh, maybe there is a valuable lesson for the students in the audience. 29th May, 1953 probably before uh, most of us were born, uh, is a very uh, proud day for India, red letter day. That was the day Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay uh, were on top of Mount Everest. Uh, this is a picture of Mount Everest. If you're flying from Delhi to Gauhati on a clear day, it's above the cloud line. It's absolutely uh, impressive. Now, these were the heroes who were the very first to climb Mount Everest. And it was a proud moment when an Indian flag flew on top of Mount Everest. It was a great feat. It was achieved against all odds. How difficult was it? It is basically going where no one has gone before. It was a height that has ne had never been uh, attempted by, by, uh, by others, or at least reached by others, 29,029 feet. Uh, very difficult terrain, dangerous crevices, extreme cold, and lack of oxygen, which had all kinds of uh, physiological effects. So the plan of this team was to uh, build eight camps. They were numbered one to, uh, one, to, uh, one to seven, and then there was the Southeast Ridge where they had a camp uh, that's uh, highlighted in blue for a very specific reason. After they conquered Everest, they were the heroes. The photograph that was uh, shown uh, everywhere was the one on the left, Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. You can see the date. It was May 29th, 1953. But in the narrative that both Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay gave, the photograph or the uh, account that they gave had this photograph as the more prominent one. They had Colonel Hunt in the middle. Now, who was Colonel Hunt? Probably interesting for us to take a look. 
Colonel Hunt was the leader of the expedition, but he was not in the middle because of that. He was somebody who was very accomplished. He had uh, received several medals uh, as, as part of the uh, British Army. Uh, he turns out that he was born in India, in Shimla, and uh, had started mountaineering at a very young age and showed great promise. And uh, he graduated from the Royal Military College at Sandhurst. He was the best cadet there, winning the King's Gold Medal. And he was considered one of the most experienced and excellent mountaineers and was picked as the leader for the 1953 expedition. Now they say that uh, the entire plan that we saw in the previous slide of all these stages and uh, uh, the, the plan of actually going to the top, the various camps was planned by uh, Colonel Hunt. He was instrumental in that, but he went a step further. He knew that there was a need for additional oxygen at the top. So one thing that he did, which uh, many times is forgotten uh, in, in the excitement of uh, uh, Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay's accomplishment, is that Colonel Hunt, along with the Sherpa, carried additional cylinders of oxygen up to the highest point at which they could go. That was the Southeast Ridge at uh, 27,395 feet. And he did something that no one expected him to do, was to leave his own oxygen cylinder back the, at that camp for Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay to use. Now that's a level at which you cannot manage without oxygen, but he decided to do that and actually came down to the next base where he would of course get oxygen, but he collapsed uh, reaching, reaching there, but was then revived. What do I want us to take away from here? It is always good for us to remember those whose hard work and sacrifice have helped us to reach where we are today. We must honor the Colonel Hunts. And I'm, uh, I congratulate the Electrical Engineering Students Association that you have recognized the faculty and those who have sacrificed to make IIT Bombay what it is today. As a teacher, as I reflect, one of the things I believe uh, COVID has taught all of us is to adapt because none of us knew what the circumstances would be and has taught us to adapt in ways we could never even have imagined. I always ask myself the question, uh, have we adapted in the best possible way? Have we taken the full opportunity to adapt? Because you know, that is essential for us. And this reminds me always of a very valuable lesson that all of us must remember, especially uh, those in, in, in the field of engineering and, and research. In our generation, we grew up with cameras that had film. And to those who were part of that generation, this logo meant something very, very special. Kodak was the undisputed leader. They were the best in class. Their products were absolutely the top of the line. The best photographers, produced photographs like this and thousands more. And they were the best photographs I could even say of all time. Kodak had a very impressive portfolio, as you can see, not only the products, they also had the best photo processing technology built over decades of experience. But the question is, where is Kodak today? The one thing that Kodak did is that they underestimated the need to change with technology. They underestimated the pace at which film cameras would be replaced by digital cameras. So as we look back at Kodak and appreciate what they have contributed to the science of photography, we also remind ourselves, what happened to Kodak? Who killed Kodak? The question is often asked. The, the statement is technology killed Kodak, but people who know the company say Kodak killed Kodak. They did not see the change that was coming. They did not change fast enough. And I believe this is, there's a very powerful lesson for IITs. We are the best in what we do, but the world around us is changing. The question is, are we adapting, innovating to stay the leaders, even in this new phase, in this new era? Something for us to think about. I believe COVID has also been in some ways a system reset for us. Something that we did not anticipate, but something that has come and has caught us all by surprise. Now, what is a system reset? A system reset is something where you can apply new initial conditions. It's a new start. Maybe it's even an opportunity to do things a little differently. 
So as I look back on the last uh, maybe 18 months since March 2020, we've been through periods of partial lockdown, total lockdown, uh, coming into the department sometimes felt very eerie. There were no students. Departments were shut down, labs were closed, nothing. There was no sign of life. But I believe that this is in some ways a system reset for us. And uh, what, does, what does a system reset allow us to do? Maybe again, history gives us a very nice and interesting lesson. Japan after World War, maybe it still looks like something that happened too far back, but uh, the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki literally devastated Japan. But 40 years later, they were the leading economy in the world, or you know, they were close to the leading economy. By 1973, they were 95%, their GDP was at 95%, 69% uh, of the United States. Now, how did they recover? It was a system reset for them. They, they looked at the, uh, the opportunities ahead. They looked at what they were doing, what they did well, what they did not do well, and there was a systematic change, plan for change. Sometimes they are a little bit surprised that uh, you know, there was a company which was trying to uh, sell uh, uh, products. It was the Tokyo Sushin Kogyo KK. Nobody was buying those products. But as you know, that name company changed its name to Sony and then the rest is history. So uh, we believe that, uh, we believe that uh, there is a uh, tremendous opportunity with system resets. And uh, we believe that uh, we must also uh, look at uh, COVID as possibly uh, a system, system reset uh, for us to do that. Now, how much did uh, this system reset impact the rest of the world? Uh, I, I believe I should share with you a story which comes from the ar archives of IBM. Now, uh, this was the time of the personal computers. They were producing, they were, they were going into mass manufacturing, IBM. Uh, at, by that time, Japan had become the manufacturing powerhouse of the world. So IBM gave a manufacturing order with respect to the personal computers. Uh, this was a trial order. They said, we will uh, give this Japanese company an order of 10,000 pieces. They said, you know, IBM has got very strict quality control. We will accept at most three defective pieces. Okay, not more than that. Our, our quality control is very, very strict. Uh, we will, otherwise, we will reject the whole shipment. So the Japanese company responded by saying, we have uh, fulfilled your order. But they also added a little interesting footnote. They said, uh, we are unable to understand your business practice. We manufactured 10,000 pieces, and all of them were compliant with the specification. But since you asked for three defective pieces, we have added three defective pieces also to the shipment. I hope it pleases you. This was the level that Japanese, uh, Japan had reached to post-World War. So a system reset, they took manufacturing to a new level, zero, zero defect manufacturing, way ahead of the rest of the world. So if, if this uh, COVID is a system reset, what is my perspective as a teacher? What would I wish? One thing that would change would change uh, so different that uh, IITs would be, would be benefited by that. So I, I thought about this question uh, for a long time and I believe I have an answer for you and I will, I will share that in, in, a, uh, in, in, the, in my next slide. Now, before uh, every uh, cycle of quiz or semester exams, there's a set of uh, notices that are sent out to the students, you know, telling them what the rules of the exams are, what the punishments are there if they break the rules. Now, here is a uh, excerpt from a circular that goes out with every uh, exam that is conducted. Circular 3D, 3E, 3F, they're all there. I would like to, you to focus on 3F. It's called graded punishments for students who indulge in unfair means. Now, look at some of the bullets. You will be punished if you possess the answer book of another candidate. You will be punished if you are passing an answer book to another student. You will be punished if you are impersonating another person writing the ex uh, to write the exam on behalf of somebody else. And I, and I, look, at my, I, 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 I look at it and I ask myself the question, is this IIT? Do we really need this in, in the IIT system? Do we need rules like this? Aren't we 
all about excellence are, are, have we somewhere along the line uh, have we have things have been compromised maybe a system reset is good for us maybe we can uh, we can take this on uh, my first uh, exam as a graduate student you know went to the classroom uh, everyone all the students were there the teacher came in and announced saying it's a 3 hour closed book exam distributed the question paper said you can go anywhere you want you can write it in the library or in your uh, dormitory room after 3 hours just draw a line come and submit the answer paper and then the professor left i actually was was very surprised i asked the student sitting next to me he said is, does he really mean you can go anywhere uh, he said yeah you can go anywhere and write so what if what if a students cheat the answer i got back was no the students will not cheat because students have come up with an honor code maybe a system reset is time for us to see, uh, to ask ourselves the question uh, can we can we re re reset it to a point where we we sort of once again uh, revisit the excellence that is part of our dna so that we can state with certainty excellence with integrity that's what we that's what we mean. i would like to end uh, with a true incident from my own life i would like to share with you what uh, uh, a teacher taught me my uh, school teacher my in my high school taught me uh, during our student days it was very uh, common for uh, for students to go and ask your classmates and teachers to write in your autograph book so these are the words that uh, my seventh standard teacher her name was mrs peppen uh, she wrote in our in my autograph book it was words from the heart it said success in every undertaking achievement that is record breaking never ending quest for what is right doing all in god's own might reaching for things good and true a teacher's earnest prayer for you very touching words i I was very thankful to mrs peppen for the words that uh, she wrote i thanked her i told her that the poem was very nice she said uh, david i want you to read the poem one more time she actually asked me to read it out aloud and she said this time around i want you to focus on the first letter of each line i did that success in every undertaking s achievement that is record breaking a and i looked went down the line and i said it says sandra and i i didn't sort of for a moment i wasn't sure what what uh, the teacher was saying she said that her daughter had graduated from the same high school 2 years earlier and she said i have i wanted to give my daughter as a graduation in her autograph book i wanted to write a very special poem for her so i wrote a poem with the with her name as as the as the frame on which she wrote the poem and she said the last line was uh, was different it said a mother's earnest prayer for you and she said and my teacher said uh, david remember my wish for you is everything i wished for my own daughter and years later uh, whenever teachers day goes by i remember this poem i remember what the teacher meant i remember what her words her words still ring in my ears and i ask myself the question do i care for my students as much as i care for my own children that was what mrs peppen taught me so i believe i would like to close by sharing with my faculty colleagues something that we all know that students will care more how much we know once they know how much we care so to conclude uh, i find the words of uh, former president late dr abdul kalam very very inspiring he said that we must have the courage to give the courage to think differently the courage to invent the courage to discover the impossible courage to travel into an unexplored path courage to share knowledge courage to remove pain courage to reach the unreached courage to combat problems and above all the courage to succeed i believe this is the clarion call for every teacher every student in all the iits and specifically for those at iit bombay so with that let me say hearty congratulations to the award winners my best wishes to the electrical engineering department at iit bombay a big thank you to you for this opportunity to share with you and lastly 
I showed my slides to my daughter. She said, your slides are fine, but they're a little bit boring. They don't have any emojis. And I promised her that I would add at least one. And for the record, thank you once again. Thank you very much, sir. And um, as, as every other teacher in, in 30 minutes, you have made use of the time as, as the best. And each lesson that you gave us is very inspiring and um, very enlightening. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, moving on, as, uh, as most of you might be aware, uh, the International Teachers Day is celebrated on 5th October uh, every year. Uh, it was declared by the UNESCO. So just quoting another quote of uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, teachers are the backbone of any country, the pillar upon which all the aspirations are converted into realities. It is truly a proud moment for us, the students, when our favorite teacher's hard work is being recognized. So therefore today is uh, therefore a good, uh, a joyous occasion because uh, five of our faculty members have been awarded the Excellence in Teaching Award for, for the year 2020-21 for their exceptional commitment towards teaching. Our hearty congratulations to Professor Mukul Chandorkar, Professor D.J. Fernandez, Professor J.K. Nair, Professor Deba Satyampal, and Professor Virendra Singh. Uh, now comes the event that most of us were pretty much excited for, the felicitation. I take this opportunity to first introduce Professor Mukul Chandorkar, a postdoctoral fellow from the University of Wisconsin, Madison, USA, with, works, with work experience in highly reputed companies, including ABB Corporate Research Switzerland and Soft Switching Technologies Corporation USA, along with varied research interests. He's under, undoubtedly one of the most experienced faculties in our department. Without further delay, I would like to invite Emmanuel Williams to express his gratitude towards Professor Chandorkar. Thank you very much. Um, so I did the course for electronics too last semester under Prof. Mukul Chandurkar. And uh, the experience was extraordinary. Uh, so despite the online mode of instruction, uh, sir took a lot of efforts to keep our interests up and running in the course. And uh, what I liked the most about this uh, about the way he taught was whenever he introduced a certain concept or some uh, or an idea, he would always bring some trivial information regarding the inventor or the discoverer. And this is something that I liked a lot. Uh, and in addition to that, Sir introduced a lot of uh, examples on the industrial application of drives, something uh, that was extremely fascinating, especially when he took uh, examples of railway traction drives, as I myself uh, was a railway enthusiast. So once again, congratulations for this award and God bless all your future endeavors. Thank you. I now request the head of department, Professor Kishore Chatterjee to felicitate Professor Chandorkar. Uh, Deputy Twilpillai, on your behalf and with your permission, I am uh, handing over the citation that, uh, that was uh, given uh, uh, by the, our institute, which reads, uh, the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, confers the Professor S.P. Sukhatme Award for Excellence in Teaching on Professor Mukul Chandorkar, Department of Electrical Engineering, in recognition of his significant contributions to the teaching activities of the institute, signed by the director of our institute on uh, September 6, 
So before uh, Mukul uh, addresses the audience, so I would like to share one uh, wonder that I have. So I have never uh, seen Mukul to raise his voice. So the wonder is that how he controls the whole uh, class of 100, 120 students without raising his voice. It's really a wonder. Okay, over to Mukul. Well, thank you, Kishore, for that uh, very kind observation. <laughs> I myself don't know the answer to that. Um, also, first of all, thanks to the Electrical Engineering Students Association for organizing this. It's really nice of you to do this for all of us, for the entire department. Um, and thank you, Professor Koel Pillai. I mean, this is, it was really nice listening to your, uh, your talk. But before I proceed, I need to figure out whether I'm audible. Can, it's okay. Yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Professor Koel Pillai, for, uh, for the great talk that you gave me. Of course, I've met you a couple of times in IIT Madras as well as in IIT Hyderabad. It was really a great exchange that, that I've had with you in, at that time. So now, uh, so first of all, I mean, about the EE department out here, uh, I've had, uh, I've been associated with the EE department here since 1979, first as a student, and then after a long break back as a faculty member. Uh, and there's been, uh, as, as Kishore was saying earlier, right from the earliest time that I have known the department, uh, we have always had this tradition of having no hierarchy and having had really good relations with our students. I mean, the, very often the, 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 the demarcation between uh, the well, faculty and student communities does get blurred. And I think in, in the larger sense, it's a good thing from the academic viewpoint. And the other thing that we've always had in the department here and not, and also generally in IIT Bombay is uh, that we've been surrounded by good people to emulate. And that has helped a lot of us in many aspects. And I, I found that I mean, a, a, a particularly you, the special quality to emulate from people that have been around in IIT Bombay over that long period of time has been empathy and the genuine desire to ensure that you do get across to the students, to all the students in the class, uh, and sort of ensure that uh, they also follow what uh, you, you've been trying to, you, you are trying to say, uh, not only the a few students in the class, but the entire class. So that has been uh, something that I've seen in all the uh, best teachers that I've had in IIT Bombay as well. And I think that is one quality that will remain a constant, regardless of whatever resets and contours the future of our education system is going to take post COVID and, all, and with technological advances and things of that kind. That one quality, I think, is not going to be uh, lost out in importance. Uh, the other thing that we have going for us in the department is the quality of TAs. Uh, I've always had good TAs. Uh, and, uh, of course, students and Emmanuel was uh, sort of kind enough to say that he enjoyed the class, but it is very reciprocal. I have also enjoyed, uh, I mean, interacting with students like him and uh, others in the class as well. So thank you, Emmanuel, for for that. Uh, and I mean, of course, as uh, Professor Coel Pilla has also been, had, had also said, Professor Kishore had said earlier, all of our skills were tested during online teaching, and I think it is still open on how we need to reorient our methods. I really don't know how it goes. Uh, of course, there are two aspects to uh, the teaching process, as the teaching learning process. One is the, one is the, the course the content, the delivery, the material and things of that kind. And the other is the assessment aspect of it. About the assessment aspect of it, of course, I, I really don't have the expertise or the, or, or, or even the, uh, have not invested enough time to think about how the 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 assessment aspect of uh, things will, will evolve post covid or even during covid if you were to continue with the uh, online mode of teaching but the delivery aspect of course there are as i had been mentioning there are several constants that i think we will need to take forward uh, in our attitudes and in the way we uh, conduct our classes and things of that kind but in any case, personally for me, I do really look forward to having the students back and interacting with them in person in classrooms. Yeah? So again, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks. It's been a pleasure working with everyone, all the students here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, 
it is my honor to introduce the next awardee. Uh, next awardee. Um, his was the first lecture I ever had in IIT Bombay. So, uh, Professor Belonji Fernandez, former head of Department of Electrical Engineering Department, has pursued PhD from IIT Bombay. A passionate professor, he shares his uh, his research interests in inverter topologies for VAR compensation, power electronic interface for non-conventional energy sources, uh, permanent magnet machines for wind power generation, and, and switch reluctance machines for electric vehicle applications. I now call upon Aditya Anvakar to share his experiences with Professor Fernandez. Good afternoon, everyone. So we have gathered to felicitate all the awardees, and I am very much honored to be given a chance to speak at this event. So let me take this opportunity to thank all the professors that have been working very hard to teach us in this new online mode and taking the education to next level. This year uh, was certainly giving us tough times, but our professor has surely been a ray of hope. I have been fortunate enough to have studied under guidance of Professor BGF, not once, but twice. And as Preeti said, even my first lecture was under Professor BGF, and he is quite learned and experienced in his field, which reflects in his teachings. So I recall that the first lecture of our DIC taken by Professor BGF, he told us about various aspects of future and what we are in for. And by the end of the lecture, we were quite motivated and inspired for spending the next four or five years of our life at the Institute. So he taught us with great diligence and he put in great effort and he is genuinely concerned with our learning and our development, which in fact encouraged us all to work harder and put in more efforts. Even in this new mode of education with the challenges of conducting labs, he made sure everyone had enriching experiences where we got to learn great amounts. It, had been, it has been a great learning experience so far, and I look forward to learning more from him as well as other faculties in EE department in person from next semester. So last but not the least, I would like to end my oration with this small quote. If you're planning for a year, sow rice. If you're planning for a decade, plant trees. And if you're planning for a lifetime, educate people and with a great efforts every day our professors are creating new leaders and innovators each year once again i heartily congratulate all the professors for receiving the teaching excellence award thank you thank you aditya i again request professor uh, professor kishore chatterjee to honor professor fernandez and do the needful so, sir, on your behalf and with your permission, I'm handing over the citation uh, to Professor Fernandez. It states that uh, Indian Institute of Technology Bombay confers the Departmental Award for Excellence in Teaching on Professor Belon G. Fernandez, Department of Electrical Engineering, in recognition of his significant contribution to the teaching activities of the Institute, signed on September 6, 2021, by our Director of the Institute. So before uh, Vijay starts uh, his speech to the audience, so I'd like to share uh, one uh, uh, one of the. So Vijay has proved our notion wrong, and the notion is that a teacher is popular if he is malleable, if he is accommodative. But Vijay, right from the beginning, as I know him, is the strictest teacher, <laughs> so far as IIT Bombay is concerned, as well as during his days in IIT Kanpur. So even being the strictest teacher, 
he is the, he's the most popular teacher that this award, my, uh, my obtaining this award over here, he's showing that. And also, I, I forgot to mention that this Dr. Fernandez as well as Dr. Bikul Chandrakar are the veterans. They're getting these awards multiple times. So with this, Dr. Fernandez. Yeah, I, talk, turn on your... Uh, Yeah, first of all, thank you, Aditya and Preeti, for your kind words. Thank you, Isa, for <clears throat> facilitating us. And thank you, Professor Kolipele, for your inspirational uh, uh, your, your address was very inspiring. Thank you so much. So mm, coming back. So David Kolipele, chief guest of the function. Head Kishore, uh, sorry, uh, Kishore Chatterjee, head EA, my colleagues, my dear students, really overwhelmed to receive this award. Words fail me to respond for this award. I will try my best. So it was a gloomy afternoon, and I was hurrying for a meeting with the dean RD, and my mobile rang. And reluctantly, I took the call. My colleague had called me to congratulate for winning this award. I couldn't believe it. Finally, I looked up to heavens and thanked him and saying, nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Yeah, uh, I'm delighted to receive this award, but wasn't expecting for, for many reasons. Honestly, trust me. It's not that I don't love teaching. I love teaching and that's the reason I'm here. The reasons are many. The first one is, I don't want to repeat what Mukul and Kishore said, our E department is known for teaching and there are many very popular teachers. And what happens is in the electrical department, whenever a young faculty member joins the department, he or she jumps the queue for this award with their good teaching. So we have heard many young faculty members in the recent past. So therefore, my turn was not in mind at all. Second was Kishore was talking about the teaching feedback. Yeah, it wasn't very glorifying either. I had to face the acquisition of quote unquote terrorizing the students for conducting uh, surprise quizzes or asking questions in the class. So. One possible reason that, <clears throat> or maybe responsible is, I had an excellent set of TS last semester when I taught E123. They were Amar Kushua and Jensen. And Amar was cut above the rest. He could conceive some excellent demo experiments. And at the end of the experiment, the student said, sir, the lab component of energy systems was the best among the lot. There were five modules, analog, digital, control, uh, signal processing, and energy systems. And with Kushwa's dedication, okay, we could, we could have an excellent lab. So in a way, I'm standing here because of him, maybe the credit must go to him. And maybe even my colleague, Anil Kulkarni, who taught me how to effectively teach the concept of Oscillators for a student who just graduated from from uh, J, from J Advance. Thank you, Anil. Yeah, and finally coming to all the students who are silent majority, they must be appreciating my efforts. I'm always driven to do my best, and then I let God multiply, uh, ma God magnify the efforts. This has seen me through life so far and keeps me strong and motivated every day. Okay. I thank all my students for putting up with me. I look forward to teaching you all once again in the classroom. Till then, goodbye. Thank you so much.
the world, Professor Jay Krishnan Nair completed his PhD from Caltech. His research interests include queuing theory, communication network, and heavy tales. I now invite Fatima Zarin Faisal to share a few words to honor him. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am Fatima Zarin Faisal, a fourth year, 12 degree student specializing in CSP. Uh, the first class I ever took under Professor Jagrishna Nair was when he took over for a week in E223. Uh, needless to say, that was one of the best well-organized lectures I'd ever had till then, which was surprising because he wasn't even supposed to teach this course, but the lecture was still top-notch. Uh, before the start of this semester, I had been thinking of taking a real analysis course under the math department, but when I saw that Professor Jagrishna Nair was offering E759, I had no doubts as to which course I should take because I had also done E210 under him before, and that was one of the most popular UG courses that we've had so far, which is saying a lot because people actually regularly showed up for class just to listen to the lecture and not just for attendance. Uh, his lectures always have the perfect mix of mathematical rigor and intuition, which is always very satisfying. Nothing feels like a hand wavy argument, but they're all still intuitive. And did I mention how well organized his lectures are? They build upon previous concepts in a very well structured way, and they all tie together at the end in a very satisfying manner. Also in the current real analysis course, he always tries to bring up, bring up examples of applications of whatever we're learning from our undergraduate EE courses, which is uh, always very interesting to hear. Uh, his notes are always an inspiration for me to make cleaner notes. Uh, even though it's very easy for an online lecture to feel impersonal and feel more like a chore, um, Professor Jay Krishnan and I managed to, manages to make it lively and interactive every single time, and I've uh, enjoyed all of his classes so far. Uh, I have also worked with him uh, on a research project for about a year now, and as a research advisor, he is pretty much the best, uh, especially when I'm stuck at some point or I cannot figure out some concept, and even otherwise, of course. I always look forward to our weekly meetings because even when I sometimes think that the whole problem is impossible, he always, he always finds um, some small thing that I have overlooked, which shows a lot of promise. He also always encourages me to formalize my arguments in a succinct manner as much as possible which is very important while doing research, in my opinion. Uh, his deep intuition about the problem statement always comes in handy and is something that I aspire to have uh, within me uh, in my career. Uh, I would like to conclude by thanking the department for providing me this opportunity to thank Professor Jay Krishna and I for being an amazing teacher and research advisor, as um, this is not a topic that comes up in our usual meetings. Uh, even though I was invited to talk about uh, my experience with Professor Jay Krishna Nair, I would also like to congratulate the other awardees and thank them and all the professors here for your dedication to making even an online lecture something to look forward to. Thank you all for your time and have a great day. Thank you, Fatima. I again request Professor Kishore Chatterjee to uh, hand over the citation to Professor Jai Krishna Nair. Professor Kuel Pillai, with your permission and on your behalf, I'm, uh, I'm handing over the citation to uh, Professor Jai, uh, Jai Krishna Nair. It reads, Indian Institute of Technology Bombay confers the Departmental Award for Excellence in Teaching on Professor Jai Krishna Nair, Department of Electrical Engineering, in recognition of its significant contributions to the teaching activities of the Institute signed on September 6, 2021 by your director of the institute. So before uh, JK settles down to uh, deliver his speech, so I'd like to uh, mention that uh, I would like to aspire to become as articulative as JK, because the most articulative person that I can see is JK, and not only that, he's always bubbling with energy. So I wish I can acquire these two qualities, acquire these two qualities from him. Over to you, JK. Ah, well, uh, thank you, Casey, and uh, uh, I sit. Am I audible now on the microphone? No. Yeah. Okay. 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 You can hear me on the microphone, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chatterjee. Uh, uh, th thank you, Professor uh, Koil Pillai. That was, uh, you know, uh, the past year and a half has been, uh, yes, a non-trivial, uh, stress-inducing experience so far as, you know, teaching online and adapting to this experience is concerned. And so, uh, yeah, your, yeah, your address was certainly, uh, certainly a booster uh, that was much needed. Uh, thank you also to the Electrical Engineering Students Association uh, for organizing this. And, um, you know, having uh, studied uh, as a student uh, from BGF himself, uh, it's, it is uh, gratifying to, to receive this uh, right after him. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say, uh, except uh, to, and thank you, Fatima, of course, for those, uh, for those, uh, for those words. Uh, it's the, I mean, I would just like to communicate that yeah, the feeling is mutual. It's, it's precisely working with, you know, bright students like yourself that actually makes this job, whether it's teaching or working on a research problem, you know, fun. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to really uh, you know, say at this point, except that, uh, you know, to borrow uh, a line from a colleague, it is really the students here that keep one honest. Uh, you know, had it not been for the fact that, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I'd like to think I put in a reasonable amount of effort before I show up, uh, you know, for every class that I deliver. But that's also because the few times that I haven't, you know, I've seen how disastrously things have gone, right? That's because the audience that one teaches is fairly demanding. And so it's, it's really, uh, you know, teaching smart and intelligent students who will not let you go without a coherently explained idea or you know something an intuition that is half baked it is teaching a demanding audience like this that makes this job uh, fun right so again thank you students for uh, for keeping me honest and uh, yeah that's I have to say thanks thank you very much sir um, I would like to now introduce to the, the next recipient of the Excellence Award, uh, Professor Deva Satam Pal. An energetic professor, he has been working in IIT Bombay since 2014. His main area of research in systems and control theory, more specifically, his areas of interests are multidimensional systems theory, algebraic analysis of systems, dissipative systems, optimal control and computational algebra. I request Emerald Quais to speak a few words about him. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, you, you are. are audible. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Emerald Quais. I am a PhD PhD student in the Control and Computing Group, and Devasatam Sir is my advisor. First of all, congratulations to all the recipients of this award. I know Devo Sir since 2014, when I started doing my MTech. We were the first batch whom he taught at IIT Bombay. Behavioral theory of systems, that subject is called. It was known to be a very difficult and mathematically rigorous subject, but the way he taught us the subject, honestly, was simply amazing. It was never felt like a difficult subject anymore. Naturally, very soon, room number 231D in the E building became our go-to place whenever we faced any difficulties in any topic. The best thing about him is that he's very friendly with each and every student he comes across. Needless to say, he's superb as a PhD advisor too. Whenever we hit a dead end, a one hour discussion or even a 10 minutes, 10 minutes discussion over a cup of chai with him, is, with him is guaranteed to open a new door of ideas. Besides technical discussions, our control lab members have hundreds of debates and discussions with him on various subjects like politics, cricket, TV series, music, movies, etc. Not many of you would know that besides being an excellent teacher, he's an excellent singer and an excellent sketch artist too. He would often hum a song while writing a paper or while solving a complex research, research problem, just like Birendra Sevag used to do while batting. To conclude, I would like to thank him for being an excellent teacher and an excellent human being. Thank you. Thank you, Imbril. Again, I request Professor Kishore Chatterjee to um, felicitate Professor Virendra Singh. Professor Koyal with your permission and on your behalf, 
I am handing over the citation uh, to Professor Devasatham Pal, which reads, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, confers the Departmental Award for Excellence in Teaching on Professor Devasatham Pal, Department of Electrical Engineering, in recognition of his significant contributions to the teaching activities of the Institute, signed on September 6, 2021, by the Director of our Institute. Uh, Professor Kwelpillai, so Devasattam, if you meet him in the, on the corridor, he's a very cool and nice person. But if you give him the podium, he can show you the fireworks, right? be it a teaching or singing a song. So over to Devasattam. Hello, I'm, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. Right, uh, the distinguished chief guest, Professor Kwelpillai, my esteemed colleagues and my dear students, uh, first of all, I feel absolutely elated to receive this award. And more than anything, I feel honored to find myself in the prestigious club comprising of two titans of this department, my teachers, my idols, my brilliant friends. Uh, first of all, thanks to Isa for organizing this event. Uh, thanks to uh, Imrul for such kind words. Um, I, I'm sure I don't deserve them. Uh, <clears throat> And also, I should, uh, I should say that uh, a big thanks should be given to all my TAs. I depend heavily on them, and it's only justified if this award is shared with all my TAs. Now, uh, I guess I'm supposed to give some idea about teaching, or my ideas about teaching, uh, you know, per se. <clears throat> but honestly, I don't have it. I just follow my instinct. That's it. But uh, I can let you in on a secret though, something that has been the main driving force for me behind my teaching. And please don't be surprised, it's actually a song. It's actually a song and that to a ghazal yeah, by Jagjit Singh. Uh, I had heard this song uh, long back when I was uh, you know, early in my early teenage or pre-teen. <clears throat> and then you know, I had completely forgotten about that song over the years. But then one day when I was uh, you know, preparing, in fact, I was wrestling with a very difficult topic that I was supposed to teach the next day, this song suddenly came hurtling towards me. Yeah. And since then, I'm constantly haunted by this song. You know, the sole motto of my teaching is to ensure that this phrase, this, the, the, the phrase that is there in the song does not apply to me. And the song is in Hindi. I will read it out the first two lines. It says, Kabi Kabi Ummid me apne jiko bahlaya hai, jin bato ko khud nahi samjhe, auro ko samjhaya hai. So I always try to make sure that this doesn't apply to me. Okay, now uh, if I understand the system correctly, uh, this award is based on the student's feedback score. So to be honest, I owe everything to the students. And I have been singularly lucky to have absolutely great students throughout my career so far, be it the students in my course or the students that I have been you know, lucky to guide or the ones that I'm currently you know, uh, guiding. And uh, you know, to end, I mean, everything set aside, awards and all, the true reward for me has been those unforgettable moments when I would get a mail from a past student perhaps now doing higher studies in a glorious university in a far off land, saying thanks Debu for teaching us Hilbert's Newster and Sats. I'm using it in my research now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, moving on last, but definitely not the least, uh, Professor Virenza Singh, he completed his PhD in computer science from Nara Institute of Science and Technology. He is a dedicated instructor with research interests in computer architecture, processor architecture, and microarchitecture, VLSI testing, fault-tolerant computing, 
robust designs and architectures and self healing system designs uh, i call upon uh, i call upon nayan berhate to express his gratitude uh, to him on behalf of all of us hello all i am nayan berhate a fourth year dual degree student and i have registered for every course possible under professor vendra singh it's an absolute honor that i have been called forth to congratulate him on receiving the excellent teaching excellence award like most of my batchmates i had my first interaction with professor vendra singh in my fourth semester and his down to earth attitude is what resonated with me the most time used to roll on so quickly in his lectures that i never felt the need to check out the time when he was teaching the interest that developed post lectures drove me to dive deeper into the topics his passion for research with ever broadening interest in various domains fascinated me and motivated me to convert from a bachelor's program to a dual degree program i have deep appreciation for how he binds together he binds everyone together in the capsule group celebrating everyone's milestones along the way professor vendra singh made me realize the true meaning of gyanam paramam dhyam and i thank him for that let's all congratulate professor vendra singh once again for his spectacular achievement thank you Thank you, Nayan. Um, I again call upon Professor Kishor Chatterjee to congratulate Professor Virendra Singh and um, felicitate him. Professor, well, till I, on your behalf and on with your permission, I hand over the citation to uh, Professor Virendra Singh. It states that Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, confers the Professor S. P. Sukhatme Award for Excellence in Teaching on Professor Virendra Singh. Department of Electrical Engineering, in recognition of his significant contributions to the teaching activities of the institute, signed on September six, twenty twenty-one, by the director of our institute. as professor singh settles down so i would like to share with you professor koil pillai that virendra singh is a voracious teacher so he on an average he takes three courses in a semester and also he is known the way he conducts his nsem the nsem problem is an uh, open ended problem and also the duration of the nsem used to be an uh, is a is an open ended duration right so that means it starts at 6 pm and uh, it's uh, uh, is free for the student that when the last student maybe the last time the last student i i think left around 6 uh, am in the next morning so that's why that is how virendra singh is known to us so over to virendra singh good evening to all am i audible yes uh today's uh, chief guest professor koli pillai Uh, Professor Chatterjee uh, and all other recipients of this award, our colleagues and students, I am overwhelmed by this award that uh, is conferred on me on my teaching. I am grateful to the students as it is given based on the uh, teaching evaluation or teaching feedback by the, the students. i am thankful to nayan for his kind words for which i hardly deserve <clears throat> it was really surprise for me to uh, receive this award as uh, this award is for a uh, teaching evaluation for past 10 years and i would be completing my 10 years in this december so i was really uh, not thinking and it was uh, uh, all of sudden very surprise that i am getting this, this award so this is uh, a a pleasant surprise for me and i am again thankful and i will put my all hearted effort to improve my teaching in years uh, in future as uh, see i had interest in teaching and i was uh, with isc bangalore and almost 10 years ago i decided to come to uh, iit bombay uh, with my teaching motivation to teach young bright btech students as i did not have 
BTEC uh, BTEC program, only uh, the MTEC programs, and I really thoroughly enjoyed my teaching over here. Uh, as Professor uh, Chatterjee said, that I taught three to four courses per semester, and all courses which I taught, at least I enjoyed, and hopefully some of these students also enjoyed. Of course, always you get mixed kind of feedback from uh, students. Some people, some students may not uh, have uh, enjoyed that much. I tried my best and uh, hope that, that I will be uh, continuing with this. Uh, uh, today, Professor Corby Pillai has already uh, mentioned about what are the challenges we have and has given excellent um, uh, view overview about how a teacher should be, how we should learn uh, in this new era um, of uh, as Professor Fernandes used to say, after Google or before Google. So we are after Google as well as after COVID. So we have to cope up with both of these challenges. Hopefully, we will uh, retrain ourselves uh, like the, the lighthouse case uh, Professor Koli Pillai has uh, presented. Uh, and we will learn uh, from those uh, challenges and won't put ourselves on, uh, uh, say, place of product, but then we will innovate ourselves and try to do our best to uh, to contrib contribute better. Um, so with this, I thank uh, all my colleagues for supporting me. I dedicate this uh, award to my teachers who uh, happen to be, be really excellent teachers. Uh, and I that's why I motivated that uh, if I do some I mean, uh, some work in that case, first my job would be the, the uh, teacher. So thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Um, it has been a delightful evening. And I again extend my hearty congratulations to the awardees and my heartfelt gratitude to all the teachers and professors out there. Um, but as they say, all good things must come to an end. Uh, so I now invite Archishman Saha, the General Secretary of ESA, to extend the vote of thanks. Uh, am I audible, Smithy? Yes, you are audible. OK. So uh, very good evening to all present over here. So on behalf of uh, Electrical Engineering Students Association and the entire organizing team, I would first like to thank our esteemed chief guest, Professor David Koelpillai, for taking time out of his busy schedule to grace our event with his presence and his kind words. I also thank our head of department, Professor Kishor Chatterjee, for taking this initiative to organize this event and felicitation ceremony for our beloved professors who have been rewarded for their hard work in teaching. In addition, I would like to thank all the other faculty members and uh, my batchmates, my juniors, my seniors for who, are, who are here for attending this event and cooperating with the challenges we all faced while conducting this event in this hybrid mode. This event would not have been possible without the immense support we received from the EE office staff who helped us fulfill all logistical requirements. So I would like to thank them also. Last but not the least, I would like to con con congratulate all our faculty members who have been bestowed upon the honor of this Teaching Excellency Award. We are greatly in indebted to you as students for making learning at IITB a fun and memorable experience for us. And yeah, so since uh, we are almost done with the event, we hope you all had a good time and you stay in the pink of your health. Handing over to Preeti to con 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 conclude the event. Thank you. Thank you, Achishman. I would like to conclude the event with uh, a powerful quote from Malala Yousafzai. Uh, which aptly shows the importance of teachers in our life. Uh, it says, one child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Once again, a very happy Teacher's Day. 
and hope you all have a great evening thank you thank you prithi thank you thank you professor quick quick pillai so we'll meet in person next time Ple pleasure professor thank you okay thank you very much thank, thank you thank you professor thank you bye oh, thank you bye bye thank you everyone bye